What's good, y'all? It's your boy Ross back at again with another video. So we're gonna check out 10 best WWE matches of 2021 so far. I'm gonna be honest with you, man. 2021 for the wrestling side of thing is actually been pretty, pretty good. There's been some pretty fantastic matches throughout the year. And I'm willing to bet, I don't know if he's gonna have this on his list, but I think there, there should be few a few Roman Reigns matches in this list I I just I just have to believe there has to be at least a few Roman Reigns matches in this list because he's been the best part of 2021 for WWE so I'm looking forward to seeing what his list is all about let's check this out appreciate all the love and support road to 50k and let's do this thing any other year in recent memory, 2021 is going to be a year of two halves, and nowhere is that pandemic post pandemic divide more clear than in WWE, with July being the month where they fling open their doors and welcome the unwashed masses yes, back sir. to professional wrestling. Can't For wait. the first six months of the year, in the books, in the pocket, out of sight, love you, OSW, let's have a look back at the 10 best matches from the final pandemic months of the big dub. And hey, we give out about WWE a lot, often with good reason, but this list was hard, with stacks of honorable mentions like both Rumbles. Sorry, can't bring my to put no fans rumbles on the list everything Kushida is doing in NXT right now Ripley Asuka Flair Adam Cole versus Kyle O'Reilly yeah, was, was brutal if a teeny bit too long the fatal yeah. five way from in your house the Smackdown chamber <laughs> match there are so many savage emissions from this list and I look forward to hearing your emotional reactions to each and every one of them I'm Adam Haling from parts fun known and these are the 10 best WWE matches of 2021 so far. Let us know your favorite WWE matches of the year in the comments. I'll reply to the most top voted comment. And for the love of God, make sure you hit that subscribe button and turn your notifications Definitely on so you never miss a PFK video. list. Finally, stick around at the end for a word from Surfshark, our sponsors for this week's episode. Number 10, Drew McIntyre versus Sheamus Raw, March 1st. WWE sure enjoyed hiding match of the year candidates on free TV this year, didn't they? With this being the first of two mm. former friends club the f out of each other on a fairly random ass episode of Weekly Telly in a match that was somehow better than the current responding pay-per-view matches. Catchy category, I know, I'm a writer. On March 1st, a Celtic hog beast I went to war bastard in a match drenched in history, whiskey, and sweat. Honestly, though, this match had no right to go as hard as it did, with the closing five minutes being nothing but hoss move after hoss move after hoss move, most of them from the top rope, because why not, I guess. As soft southerners cheering on Ireland and Scotland, destroying each other, hoping that they never have the idea of getting together and revenging themselves on the English. Their no-holds-barred match at Fastlane three weeks later was also very good indeed but yeah. all the weapon spots in the world couldn't match up to this match's intensity. I didn't also, see this that match. closing bro kick Claymore spot, Chef Glasgow Kiss. Number nine, MSK versus Grizzled Young Veterans versus Legado Del Fantasma, NXT TakeOver, Stand and Deliver. And now for some very beautiful dancing. After Undisputed Era finally fractured like a Westlife commemorative mm -hmm. plate, there were slight doom clouds on the horizon for NXT's tag team division. Thank the Lord then for the adrenaline injection of MSK, two supernaturally charming and acrobatic showmen whose feud with the forever underrated Grizzled Young Veterans held the division together in a time of trouble. At Stand and Deliver Night 1, one of the strongest overall nights of wrestling in a very long time, by the way, the vacant tag straps were up for grabs in a three-way no, MSK I versus GYB that match. versus that was actually LDF, entertaining. and it's amazing what genuine unpredictability can do for a match. Would WWE go all in on MSK after they won the Dusty Classic? Would the veterans take it to redeem their loss in that tournament? Would Legado steal it so they could do the faction holds all the gold moment? All three mm -hmm. options worked, which gave the match an undeniable wow, that was a, a pretty good match. even before it came a stupefying acrobatic casserole of mayhem and hurled <laughs> flesh. A hugely entertaining statement on NXT tag team wrestling even before the brothers of dad struction champer and thatcher got involved oh, that yeah, was very special kid that was a, a a pretty good match man definitely if y'all get a chance go watch that that was Sami Zayn versus very Kevin good. Owens, Last Man Standing, SmackDown, July 2nd. Part 2 in the form of friends club the f*** out of each other on a A lot of y'all were sound, telling me this match was really good. I haven't checked it out. I may go go back and actually check it out. But a lot of you guys are saying this was a fantastic match. Fairly random ass episode of Weekly Telly in a match that was somehow better than the corresponding pay-per-view matches category, Electric Boogaloo. Call it recency bias, but Hot Dog this match ruled one of the sassiest and incongruously violent affairs to not be featured on pay-per-view in a long time. Look at Sami Zayn 
Reigns back Ooh. after the match. That pain must be castronomical. Everything you could want from a KO Zayn last man standing match is here. KO building a tower of weaponry, which of course guaranteed that his hamster ass would be the one to plummet <laughs> through. A match yes. narrative told through amazing facials and of course callbacks to their long and cruel history together with that final trilogy of power bombs hearkening as far back Ooh. as 2015. I mean, it's so mm -hmm. hilariously WWE that these two men would legit shorten each other's careers fighting over a spot in a Money in the Bank ladder match only for the very next segment to feature Selena Vega being just announced as also qualifying for a spot. But even Loopy Vince logic can't take away from this knuckle fest of glorious violence. Quite literally, fight forever. Number seven, Finn Balor versus Pete Dunne NXT TakeOver Vengeance Day. Has it been a wrestling glow up in recent memory greater than Finn Balor's return to NXT? Going from an empty eye smiler on the main roster reminiscent of your brother. Him going to NXT, best going back to NXT, best thing that happened in his career, to be honest with you. This high friend who's always somehow in your kitchen to a rock and roller psychopath with history's biggest and meanest penis. Throw him in with one of wrestling's best current technicians in Pete Dunne and baby, you got a stew going. Short of maybe Kyle O'Reilly, there's no one out here stretching people better than Pete Dunne. And for the most part, this is a clinic of psychologically taught, focused, ultra convincing joint manipulation mm -hmm. and counter wrestling broken up by brief flashes of stiff and sinister violence done catching ballers i, I didn't see this match a triangle choke is a thing of beauty likewise the glorious false finish of done crotching Balor with his own arm leading to a bitter end while the first half may be a little too technical for some the closing five minutes are classic takeover main event big desperate yeah, moves albeit still match. held together with Dunn's fixation on breaking fingers a connoisseur's choice number six bobby lashley versus braun Strowman versus drew mcintyre wrestlemania backlash Sometimes, though, more is more, and this is a giant, filthy cheeseburger of a match. Three titans doing horrible things to each other in a match that skips the beginning and goes straight to Armageddon. Some people say... I mean, the match was... I wouldn't have put it in my top ten. I don't really too much remember that match, but it, it, was, it, was, a, it was a train wreck. A carnage fest. That's pretty much how I viewed it. That Vince still hasn't slept since this match. It's all his fantasies come true. Just an endless carnival of yeah, fudging just, meat and a it, it, it has some. It has some pretty cool spots. It was. It's enjoyable to watch, but I don't know if I would have put it in my top ten. So things happening that should not be able to happen. Braun Strowman should not be able to hit a somersault plancher off the ring apron to the outside. Drew McIntyre should not be able to hit a Mishinoku driver to Braun Strowman. Braun shouldn't be able to catch a Claymore into a powerbomb through the announce table. It, it was, is so it was much good, all the time and all of it very it dangerous good, looking indeed. <clears throat> silly wrestling. Silly, silly, stupid wrestling. Braun, you are missed. Number five, Roman Reigns versus Cesaro. Wrestle This, this match? Definitely deserves to be on this list. When I say they made Cesaro look like a billion bucks, I legitimately thought Cesaro actually had a chance here. They made him look great, bro. Oh, Mania backlash. God. Spoiler alert, you're going to see a bit of Roman Reigns in the top five. Of you course. Know he's kind of the best thing in all of wrestling, of not course. called Adam Pay. Thank you. Thank you. Of course. Of course he gotta be there. H. I will acknowledge Roman as the head of this particular table because his run's been booked to pretty much perfection from SummerSlam and a lot of that has to do with the choice of Roman's opponents. Mm -hmm. Every month Roman's out here with the best indie stars of the generation and keeping up Kevin Owens, a certain goat that we'll get to, and of course Cesaro, who yeah. hasn't felt this important since 2014 Facts. and Jesus Christ, it's about time. At WrestleMania Backlash, which zombies aside was a glorious pay-per-view turns out, the big dog and the big Tony went 30 minutes and mm -hmm. yes, this is what we've been asking for. We were right to want this all along. Some gorgeously fluid wrestling paired with the well-established story-driven moments we've come to expect so from good. Roman Reigns matches, bit always great value, Paul Heyman at ringside, the long-term Uso storyline, or simply the tribal chief's poise and disdain for his opponent, even when that opponent is able to snatch him with an uppercut at a moment's notice. Could have done without the distracting vampire teeth, Big Chez, but that's my only quibble. Number four, Daniel Bryan versus Edge versus Roman Reigns, WrestleMania. Fantastic match. Fantastic match. I love this match. One of my favorite WrestleMania matches of all time. Build up. One of my favorite build ups to WrestleMania of all time. It was great. It was fantastic. Honestly, I'm going to be honest with you. This is, I want to say this is probably the best Roman Reigns match we've ever had at WrestleMania. 
The other one was when he was going against Brock Lesnar. Um, I think that was WrestleMania. Was that WrestleMania 31? I think it was WrestleMania 31. I'm sure you guys will correct me. <laughs> but when he was going against uh, uh, Brock Lesnar in the main event and he got busted open and Seth Rollins cashed in, that was actually a good match. That was his best WrestleMania performance up to that point. But this one, this one right here, oh, my God. This this was his best showing, bro. Love this match. 37. Once this match starts, it never stops. Calling to mind match. one of the greatest triple threats of all time, Seth Rollins versus John Cena versus Brock Lesnar. From the ringside goons getting involved before getting demolished, to the uneasy alliances to take care of the bigger threat. Man, that double submission spot devolving into dual. That was so good, bro. That... Oh my god, that that double submission spot where Roman is screwed. He's done. He doesn't even have an option to even tap out. It was one of the greatest spots of all time in WrestleMania history. Oh my god, bro. That oh jeez, man. Dueling headbutts. Such a punch the air moment of silly wrestling humor and desperate ingenuity. Like the NXT tag triple threat we mentioned earlier. It's another match hugely better. Actually, he did actually kind of tap. He actually did kind of tap in the match. Now, cause I, I just saw the little clip. He ended up tapping like Edge's leg, bro. Oh, it was so good, bro. This was so good, bro. Fitted by seeds of unpredictable doubt. Edge was a nostalgic favorite. Roman was the unstoppable champion. Brian was the fly in the ointment, the pain in the ass. And those three stories wove themselves together seamlessly with everyone looking like a superstar right up until the finish, which crowned Roman as the superstar who eats superstars for f***ing breakfast. To be specific, a pancake breakfast stacks on... Phillips so presents good. Fantastic one match, bro. Trim. Just... One of the best WrestleMania matches of all time. Definitely, if you have not seen it, go check it out. You will definitely enjoy it. It's just, it's a match you can actually go back and watch again and just be still entertained like you watched the very Number first three, time. Bianca Belair versus Sasha Banks, WrestleMania 37. Sometimes it's not about the moves. It's about the occasion. It's about the right people having the right match on the right night. The twin main events of WrestleMania 37 ruled. And while the triple threat had the violence, this had the emotion, the culmination of WWE. Now, this was a good match. to conclusively Man. pull the trigger on Bianca Belair. Yeah, this was a good match. False start, a move totally vindicated by the This Is Awesome chance before the match even began the bout itself was stellar bianca's a superstar and honestly there are fewer more reliable big match wrestlers in the industry than sasha banks while mm -hmm. most people will just remember the hair whip spot in isolation one of the best spots of the year sound like a fucking gunshot yeah. so much good stuff here bianca gorilla pressing sasha and walking up the ring steps with her like a terrifying monster bianca suplex dead lifting her mm -hmm. three times in the same spot sasha wrapping bianca up in her own hair it is grand wow, stuff fantastic suitable match. for the grand Grandest stage one. of them all. Number two, Walter versus Tommaso Ciampa, NXT TakeOver, Stand and Deliver. Only Walter could convincingly end a match with a knife edge chop. He is one of the single greatest attractions this was going a right great now. Match and please, too. WWE, do not f up Walter. Remember Survivor Series 2019? Do not f up Walter again. This match is eye-watering and I love it so. For a while, Tommaso Ciampa's brand of Rasputin-flavored ultraviolence has lain dormant in NXT, occasionally bubbling to the surface to create magic. His matches with Thatcher were wonderful. His match with Walter is another Ooh. level. The multiple chops, including the hilarious spot of Walter chopping yeah. through the announce table. Him nearly decapitating oh Ciampa God. in the best this big boots as the late great match. test. Ciampa somehow hitting a fairy tale ending on the world's largest just the most threatening baby it all just feels real every <laughs> the world's largest most threatening baby he does look like a big ass baby but he'll beat your ass last horrible scrap of it the selling the strikes the sounds the welts the finish a wonderful exhibition oh. and an increasing legacy of pain for both competitors this was a dream matchup and number Gosh. one roman reigns versus daniel bryan smackdown April wow 30th. that's his number match one of the year so far was on bloody smackdown last I ain't gonna lie to you. That match was good. That match was great, man. That, oh, man. This is why SmackDown has been the better show out of Raw. Like, it's the better show. They are the A show. Raw is no longer the A show. I'm sorry. You got Roman Reigns on there. You got better wrestling, better storylines. Smackdown, man. They're holding it down right now. I can't believe it either. Daniel Bryan versus Roman Reigns with Bryan being 
banished from SmackDown if he loses. Doesn't really get much more blockbuster than yeah. that. And this lived up to it. And hell, what a match to debut a new theme. Yep. As Roman ascends to final boss status. It's yep. WWE's version of Sephiroth's theme, and I am so here for it. Anyway, the match. The match is f***ing brilliant. Daniel Bryan wrestles like it's his last match, turbocharged with speed, intensity, and mm -hmm. raw facial emotion. Him and Reigns are a perfect blend of yes. speed and power. Roman hitting him with huge moves like a top rope powerbomb, and Bryan being able to strike little and often at Roman's arms while using his own speed against him. Joyous stuff, even without the huge and legitimate stake, which WWE, rare for them, actually followed through they on, did. delivering a definitive finish, clean no less, and yeah. a result that increases in significance. He beat him clean! He beat him clean! And kicked him off! Daniel Bryan's gone! He legitimately beat him clean. When have you ever seen a match like that happen where the babyface actually loses and actually leaves they don't ever do that this is the one time they did he legitimately beat him clean bro no help that is oh my that makes you hate him more from a character standpoint because he's like bro this motherfucker beat daniel bryan with no assistance he did it by himself and then Banished him from SmackDown. Oh, so good. Significance for every subsequent week that Daniel Bryan remains missing in action. The yeah. only downside was that this match didn't happen in front of fans. And honestly, yes. I can't wait for wrestling to be wrestling yes. again. Hey, you've just finished watching one of our Oh lists. my God, man. If that match would have happened in, in front of fans, fans would have lost it. They would have gave Roman such nuclear heat. People, there would have been shots of fans like this shocked like oh they really let him go like bro this ah uh, that's why i can't wait to this friday smackdown is coming to houston texas man can't wait i wish i was going to the show i won't be able to go to the show but i will be checking it out back in houston fans are back looking forward to it also money in the bank i believe is coming up uh this sunday i could be wrong but i do believe it's coming up this sunday so definitely i'm gonna be live streaming for you guys we gotta check this out because this is gonna be a pretty interesting pay-per-view i'm looking forward to uh watching with you guys but i appreciate all the love and support man you guys have been showing on the channel and comment down below what was your favorite match from 2021 so far this year if i had to choose for me personally I, my favorite match is still that WrestleMania match. Them Edge versus Roman versus uh, Daniel Bryan at WrestleMania in front of fans. Favorite match of this year. Hands down. Love that match. Probably going to go watch that match again after I finish recording this video. But I appreciate all the love and support. Roll 250K. Appreciate y'all kicking it with me. I'll see y'all on the next one. Peace.